The Lord be with you. A reading from the conclusion of the Holy Gospel according to John. Peter turned and saw the disciple following whom Jesus loved, the one who had also reclined upon his chest during the supper, and had said, Master, who is the one who will betray you? When Peter saw him, he said to Jesus, Lord, what about him? Jesus said to him, But if I want him to remain until I come, what concern is it of yours? You follow me. So the word spread among the brothers, the disciple would not die. For Jesus had told him he would not die, just, what if I want him to remain until I come? What concern is it of yours? It is this disciple who testifies to these things and has written them, for you know that his testimony is true. There are also many other things that Jesus did for these were described individually, and I think the whole world would contain the books that would be written. The Gospel of the Lord. Us to gather here this morning on this last day in anticipation of the great solemnity and feast of Pentecost, as we together bring the Easter season to a close and we pray for the outpouring of the Holy Spirit upon us and upon all our sisters and brothers in faith to continue to renew our witness to Christ in the world. But as you and I know, in these weeks of Easter, we have been meditating on the early days of the church, an age which was marked by courageous witness those who were willing in season and out of season to proclaim clearly their faith in Christ the Lord. Recall the example of Stephen, the martyr, the sufferings that Paul underwent unto his death in Rome, and of course the rock upon which you and I stand, the great witness of Peter after his conversion, who also laid down his life for Christ. In Rome. As it was then, so it is now, that in our own age, in many ways so similar to the imperial Rome that ruled over the earliest disciples, an age equally marked with a disregard for human life, a preoccupation for material goods that reduced life to a commodity, we, like them, are called in our own age and time to do what they did, to be courageous witnesses to the truth of Jesus Christ. And that is why we are here, because you, my sisters and brothers, have fulfilled that, some for many years, others beginning their journey, but together as brothers and sisters, we come here to our Father's house, to the table of the Lord, to seek the grace and strength to remain courageous witnesses to the truth. The truth that God in the fullness of time took a human life in his Son, and blessed all human life, has blessed every human person with dignity. Every human person has the right to be born into the world because they are of infinite value to our Father in heaven. And once born, it is the obligation for you and me and all people to ensure that human life, rich and poor, sick and old, handicapped and well, has dignities and rights and can live in prosperity, justice and peace. This is the truth of our faith in Jesus Christ. And therefore, on this great feast of Pentecost, we will begin to celebrate tonight. Let us pray that one of the seven great divine gifts that comes from the Spirit, is it not courage? 
let us pray in you and me and in all God's people, we may stand firm in courage and live that truth in season and out. For will we be mocked? Yes. Will we be persecuted? Yes. Will people choose to ignore us and be indifferent to what we are proclaiming? Yes, they will. Will the world perhaps even hate you and me for being these courageous witnesses? I dare say, because the truth is, the more we stand firm, the more the anger will rise, the more the opposition will grow, because even in the hearts of those who oppose the truth, in their heart of hearts, they know that what we preach is the truth and the truth will set them and us free. So I ask you, my sisters and brothers, to continue to fulfill the ministry God has given you, to stand firm no matter what obstacles you and I face. For in the end, we know that we will be victorious the culture of death will be eliminated. Life will triumph because the tomb on Easter morning was empty and life did triumph in Jesus Christ. Then, now, and unto the ages because life is Jesus the Lord and to him as courageous witnesses, as we pray for the end of abortion, euthanasia, and all that harms human life, born and unborn, to him this day and all the days of our lives, we give honor and glory and praise now and forever. Amen. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us in this down to the hour of our death. Count Mary, Queen of Grace, the Lord, blessed art thou among us, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us in this down to the hour of our death. Amen. Thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. 